Hi, this is going to be a lecture on um, lenses and mirrors and ray tracing. So we're now moving away from treating light as a wave and we'll treat it as exclusively as rays. Right? And that's really just a choice of how we analyze the situation. It's not some kind of statement about what the underlying physics is. Right? We all agree, everyone agrees, that light is, is a wave. But we represent the waves in the form of rays. And what that allows us to do is to come up with some very simple rules to follow that allows us to figure out, for example, where do we see the image of some object when it gets reflected or refracted through a lens or some combination thereof. Um, and it allows us to understand and ultimately build all sorts of optical instruments, like microscopes, telescopes, all that stuff. We're analyzing it in terms of like wave motion. It's going to be really difficult, but with that ray model, we're able to do that. So all those examples we look at, they fall under um, ray tracing. All right. So let's just do them in order to get a basic idea. We're going to start with just flat, um, flat mirrors. So here's a flat mirror. I imagine this is my mirror. So this is the back of the mirror. This is the front of the mirror, and I've got some kind of single object um, like a pinhead like some single single thing that i can think of as being point light now that object is well light falls onto it from some source you know just from the, the surrounding and it's going to it's going to have light rays go off in in all directions right that's something always to be to bear in mind that the object doesn't just shoot light rays in one particular direction it shoots light rays in all directions. It's just most of those rays, they're not going to do anything to us, right? They just, they just hit a wall over there, and that's it. So if I look at it, right, if I look at it from over here in a straight line, I can see it right here. How would I actually look at it? I've got two eyes, one, two, and they each, a ray from this reaches my left eye, and a ray from this reaches my right eye, and my brain can figure out like where do those rays appear to be coming from? Like what's the point where those two rays meet? Oh, that is where the object is. That's how my brain would construct the location of say the pinhead and I just look at it. So now let's figure out where does my brain construct where the pinhead appears to be if light gets reflected by the mirror. So to do ray tracing, you always wanna have a ruler. Um, otherwise it becomes very messy very quickly. So let's pick a ray, it doesn't matter which, that it hits the it's the mirror. I'm going to pick. Um, I'm going to pick this one here. So the ray hits the mirror down here. And then the one rule we're going to need um, is that for a flat mirror, for any mirror really, but especially for a flat mirror, is that the angle of incidence is the angle of reflection. Right. So um, it comes off at an angle that is identical to this angle here. I could in this case actually measure it because I've got the tools for it, right? So this is about a 30 degree angle. Um, so the light is going to go off at 30 degrees, which is over here. So it looks something like this. Right, so those two angles, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And right, theta i, theta r. Right, it's also true. If you've got reflection on a surface where some light gets refracted into the medium, like a surface of water, for example. Right? So if I have, if my eyeball is down here, right, looking at this, then say this is my this is my, my eye down here, right? My eye, beautifully drawn. The light ray falls into it, and my brain says, ah, this light ray came from somewhere along here, somewhere along here, right? I mean, my brain doesn't intuitively know about mirrors, know intellectually about it, but you know, my sort of um, paleolithic uh, brain, my animal brain from before we were humans, like it, it doesn't know about mirrors, right? It seems to see the object somewhere along this line. Now to figure out where exactly along this line, I need a second ray, right? I need two eyes to figure out um, figure out um, three-dimensional positions. So let's take another um, 
ray from this and doesn't matter which but the one that also bounces off the mirror now i could take this one here but it just stays over there i'm just going to pick another one but actually fall into my eye i can always draw more rays number of rays i draw doesn't matter unless i'm worried about intensity which i'm not right here so after this right here i'm going to hit the mirror there i'm going to use the same rule i'm going to draw the normal you could just take those those angles of course but it is convention to measure the angles um, from the normal so in this case the angle is um, i measure it to be a little bit over 50 degrees up here so i'm going to um wait did i get the angle get the wrong angle didn't i all right let's do it um all right the game is going to go with that angle a little bit over 50 degrees so this is going to be sort of there i think so i'm trying to do this carefully enough yeah, there we go so this dot is just where i have my pen and then what happens is that if my, my brain, right, this, this might fall into my other eye. My other eye might be located somewhere, somewhere down there. Did I draw the same angles here? I feel like I did not. I did not, did I? Yeah, I got it wrong. Um, I should have drawn this. Okay, let me fix this a little bit. So this, this was a badly drawn ray. Despite all my tools, I did a bad job should look have looked more like like this a little bit otherwise the rest of the diagram is going to be a bit messed up so let's pretend my other eye is actually over here of course realistically my two eyes they're fairly close together but then it'd be hard to see what's going on so my brain thinks now that i've corrected it to the right angle because i wanted those two angles to be the same and when that was poorly drawn here which would have caused the trouble my brain thinks that the this light ray came from somewhere back there. And this light ray, this eye alone thinks, okay, the pin that it sees is somewhere along this line. My other eye says it's somewhere along this line. So my brain constructs the position of the pin to be here. We call this the image. And what's important to note is that the image, the position of the image does not depend on where your eyes are. Right? If I had a third eye, or I move one of my eyes, I can I can do another drawing. Maybe I'll take I'll take this one here. Right? This angle right here. And then if I draw this, I'm going to cheat here. I, I know it's, it, it'll look like this, bounce back like this. And but to my brain, if I look at it from from over here, it'll my third eye. It'll appear. Maybe I'm a spider for eight. It'll appear to come from there. It's not a good example because spiders don't use the eyes for 3D vision in the same way. Way right? Part of for like. Um, surrounding vision but you know the jumping spider eyes facing forward right all right anyway beside the point the point is the image no matter which light rays i i pick just by following the basic rules of angle of incidence is angle of refraction reflection sorry i'm getting the, the image of the pin here and one thing you can easily check if you draw this correctly or just by analyzing the geometry in terms of triangles and so on um, you can easily check that this distance here is the same as this distance here, All right? And they're in the same, like they're in the same sort of the same height along the mirror. So we might call this the object distance, and this the image distance. And of course, I could explain all of this in terms of waves. They're spreading out and they're bouncing off. And then they appear to come from a point back there. Okay, so that's flat mirrors. Pretty straightforward. We can do all sorts of geometry and um, examples with this. But, but let's, um, let's leave this there for now. Now let's see what happens when we have a mirror that is curved. And I'm going to start by imagining I put a mirror. This is my mirror back here. 
that's sort of like the inside of a spoon. So it's sort of bent, and the reflective side is on the inside here. Like the inside of a spoon would be a good example. We call this a um, concave mirror. They're going to be concave and convex mirrors and lenses. And it's hard to not confuse the two. It's one of those. It's a 50-50, yet you always forget which one it is. Uh, I think of it, the concave one is like, it's a little bit like a cave. You can like go on the inside, bends in the way that you can go inside it. I don't know if that helps. Okay, so what happens with those? So we imagine this is part of a, a part of a circle. Now let's shoot light at it from far away. If I shoot light at it, that's essentially parallel. I drew the center line here, that's often a useful tool. I'm going to shoot light at it that's parallel to the center line. Now one thing that of course happens is that if a light ray comes in here, right, in the middle, it's just going to bounce back. Why? Well, because here the, the mirror is flat. Like you draw the tangent to the mirror right here and it makes 90 degrees, it's going to bounce, bounce right back down like this, right? What if I shoot a light ray like somewhere up here but in the same direction? Maybe like this. Well, here's what's going to happen. It's going to bounce back, and it's a mirror. Angle of incidence is angle of refraction. Now, it's harder to see the angles because this is a curved surface. What I can do is I can draw a tangent line. And I'm just eyeballing this right here. It can be something like this. This is my tangent line up here. Then I can do this, and I want to find it's going to bounce back something like something like this then I can do the same thing to to yet another ray let me, me use a different color just so they're not all the same um, maybe I'll I'll do it um, down here somewhere or maybe I'll do it fairly fairly close to the middle but not quite at the middle so here's the incoming ray now here, the tangent right is just barely not vertical anymore. It's going to barely send this thing upwards. And you can, if you draw this carefully, you get this. Let's do one more. Something this purple. The light will be coming in down here. Again, I'm assuming it all comes in parallel. We're going to talk about you know, other directions in a second. And here's my tangent at this point. right? That's the direction of the mirror at this point. The mirror doesn't, the light ray doesn't care that the mirror has a different sort of orientation up here. It only cares about the orientation down here. Um, and then, because it's sort of bent more, it's going to bend at a bigger angle. And I can, you can show that all those lines are going to go through one and the same point up here. Right, so all lines, all rays, that are coming in parallel, like parallel sign, to the center line um, they reflect through a single point. This single point that's right here, I'm going to give a name to. We call it, call this point the focal point. Or the focus of the mirror. I do with this here. This is my. Um, my focus. So if it goes to here, there. Now, what does what will determine where the focus is? You can probably just see that if the mirror is more bent, it's going to be closer, right? If it's, if it's a steeper bend like this, the focus is going to be closer. If it's a more sort of flat mirror, not perfectly flat, just less bent, it's going to be further away. So the strength of your concave mirror in a sense is determined by how bent it is. Now one thing you can also show, and I'm not going to do this, but you can show it geometrically, is that the focal length, I'm going to call this distance from the mirror the focal length. Let me write this down first before I say anything else. 
the distance. From the focus to the mirror is called the focal length. So um, the distance from here to here, focal length. From from this point to there. Um, what you can show is that the focal length is half the radius of the mirror. So this mirror is part of a part of a circle. Like where would be the center of that circle? Would be somewhere over here. It's half. It's twice the distance as the focal length. Right. So you could show this um, geometrically. I'm not gonna not gonna do it. For the most part, we imagine we're given a mirror. Um, and it has a given focal length, right? You worry about the actual curvature of it if you're trying to, say, make uh, mirrors like that. Does this sort of situation have an application? Definitely. Um, one thing is it can collect a lot of light and focus it here. Right? So one thing you could do is you could dig a hole, you line it, like a round hole, you line it with maybe some reflective material, focus sunlight right here, and maybe you can make a fire there. Does it work? You're stuck in the desert and you want to make a fire um, might help you the other, another thing you can do is that you could use this for a kind of telescope setup where you have lots of light coming in from far away like from a star and so it comes in parallel rays they get reflected and so you get focused here and then you've got something else right here maybe another mirror that sends it somewhere else we can talk about telescopes more later but what it allows you to do is to collect a lot of light and send it to one point. Also, conversely, what you could do is you could put a light right here at the focal point. What happens then? Then the light will follow those same lines, just in the opposite direction. Right? I mean, if the ray bound here goes in, bounces that way, then the ray going the other way would bounce back this way. If I put a light here, the reflected light will all point in the same direction. Where would that be useful? Well, for example, in a in a flashlight. Right, you have a light bulb here, you've got a mirror coating on the inside, and so the light comes out forwards, or the um, headlights of a car. Right, you've got a light bulb and you've got mirrors here. Now the shape isn't actually just part of a circle. Um, part of the reason is that actually if that if that circle were to, to be too bent, like bends too far, then light that hits the mirror like up here somewhere is going to slightly miss the focal point. Um, that's because the the light gets reflected here rather than back there, but at the angle that it would need to hit the focal point from there. We're not going to worry about it too much. These are so called like aberrations, which you worry about a lot if you want to build telescopes, for example, right? Get precise telescopes. Um, you worry about all sorts of you know minor corrections that we can ignore right now. But the idea is, right, put light bulb here, and I can have light come out in the same direction. All right, so this is light coming from far away, right? It needs in the focal point. But we can use this focus, this focal point, as a kind of um, indicator of what the strength of the mirror is. So you remember... A ray that is parallel goes to the focal point. A ray that goes to the focal point is going to bounce back parallel. Right? It goes both ways. Those are my rules. That's all we're going to need. So let's let's have some image formation by concave mirrors. Um, let me write down the rules first. I'm going to write them down here before we get started. First, to the rules. And um, the rules are parallel rays. But parallel, I mean parallel to the center line. Um, bounce back through the focus, to the focal point. Um, they become focal rays. Let me write this down too before I write a second rule. And focal rays will 
is a uh, rays that already go to the focus on their way towards the mirror, they um, reflect as parallel rays. And those are the only rules we're going to need to figure out how do images form for um, for concave mirrors, right? Remember, an image is where does my brain think that the um, that the object is the light is coming from? Right? So let, let's have a look. So here's here's my my drawing. So I'm going to measure this pin, and I'm just going to find where is the head of the pin. I'm not going to care about anything else. If I have an extended object, like a real 3D object, I technically have to find the image of each, every single point. Right? So we're going to find the image of a single point. If you want to know what the whole object looks like, well, you're going to need um, you're going to need to construct the image of each point and then connect up the lines. Right? So let's let's draw this. Um, so I'm going to use the two rules, right? This pin here sending light rays in all sorts of directions. Okay. You can see it from, from any direction. But we're only going to be interested in rays that actually hit the mirror. And now most of them would be hard to construct because they hit the mirror at funny angles. Uh, maybe we could do it with enough sort of geometric considerations. We're going to use the two basic rules given what we know about um, focal rays and parallel rays. So I'm going to take a ray that hits the mirror um, parallel to the to the center line. This one here. Okay. Now this one is going to bounce back through the focal ray. That was my, my first rule, right? My first rule here Parallel rays bounce back through the focus. Okay, so this one is going to bounce back. Um, let me change color for the bounce back rays. It's going to bounce back this way. It doesn't end there, right? it just keeps going. And there's nothing there. Okay. The second rule is I, well, I need a second ray, right? This ray alone, if I put my eye here, I know my brain thinks, okay, that pin is somewhere along this line. I don't know where. Is it back here? Is it here? Is it here? I don't know. Right? So we need a second ray. Um, so I'm going to pick the ray that... I could pick any ray that hits the mirror, but most of them will not get me to the answer. So I'm going to take the ray that goes from the object through the focal point. Right? There is one such ray. These rays go in all directions. So one of them is going to go right through the focal point and then hit the mirror. And then what happens? Well, then it bounces back and the rules say if a ray goes to the focal point, it gets reflected as a parallel ray. Right? That's the rule. Saying we're following rules now. This is how I can get a robot to do this. Um, so I'm going to draw it like this. So let's look at this. Where does my brain think that the pin is? Where does my brain think that the light is coming from? Well, if those I need to, any two rays, right, are enough. If I kept doing this with more rays, I would find that they all cross at the same point, namely down here, right? This is where the reflected rays cross. Let me make a note of this. So my brain thinks, ah, they all start at this point. So up here, they merge here. Because my, my brain, I could have might be looking at this, and they say, oh, look, those two light rays, they all come from this point here. That's what my brain says. Now, I might be looking at different light rays, but all light rays that get reflected off the mirror are going to go through this point. So even if I don't see those two exact light rays, I've constructed the point where all the light rays appear to be coming from 
after they've been reflected. So, that means this is the point where the image is formed. Right. So, let me, um, let me then make a, make a note here. I think I flipped colors from what I used for the flat. No, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Right. So, this is going to be my image. The pin, the image of the pin is right here. Now, if you do it with the rest of the, the pin, um, what you'd find is that this point here, the bottom, if it's on the center line, the image is also going to be on the center line. It look, actually looks like this. So this for the image of the pin is here. And it's upside down. Now, now if we could make a distinction that we haven't made before. And we're going to distinguish real and virtual images. Right, and let me, let me show this to you. So in this case of the flat mirror that we had, right, the light rays never actually were there. Right, the light rays, they weren't always on this side. This is behind the mirror. There's nothing there. It just geometrically, it appears to be coming from there. This is the image. And the image here is virtual. What does that mean? It means light never actually was there. So if you hold your hand right there behind the mirror, you're not going to see anything on your hand because the light never gets there. It just, if we on this side, we think the light came from there. So we call this a virtual image when the light never actually passed through the point where it appears to be coming from. Now, in this case, the story is different. Right? In this case, the light actually went through that point. And it's a, it's a real image. So, I guess the second parenthesis, real image. Why is it real? Because the light actually went there because it's on you know this side of the mirror so one effect of this one way to sort of test this is you could put a if you know you set this up and maybe this is some bright light you light your pin up really bright and you can hold a little card there maybe a piece of cardboard and you'd be able to see a projection of the um of the pin onto that if you hold it exactly the right spot exactly where the image is you see a sharp image of the pin on there, so you can use that for you know sorts of projections. Um, so you, for some magic tricks, it looks looks can look remarkably like a real thing. Like we know when you look in a flat mirror, okay, behind the mirror, it's not really there. It's, it's the magic dream world you can never get to. In this case, you can like put your finger right there. Right, you look at this, you see the real image that you hold your finger there, um, and you try to grab it if the angles are right. Right, you can sort of fool our brain with those real images. Okay. It's so a real image, light actually goes there, virtual image, light doesn't go there. So let's change up the situation slightly. Here's the difference. I've got the same mirror, but now the pin is on the inside of the focal length. Right? This is my focal point. I didn't say this explicitly, but hopefully it was clear. This is the focal point. This is the focal point. Now my pin starts out being really close. So let's do the same same thing. Of course light rays go in all directions, but I don't care. I'm just gonna pick the two rays that I know I can draw. So I'm gonna take the parallel ray. Yep. And it bounces back as the focal ray. That's the rule. Like this. Okay, so my brain thinks I guess I should have changed color, shouldn't I? Okay, let me change, draw over this line, and make it green like I had it above. This is the, this is the reflected one. And I switched colors from before. Well, never mind that. Right? So incoming ray, reflected ray. So my brain thinks, okay, the, the pin or the light emerges from somewhere along this line. Let's have a second ray. Well, second ray, okay, wait a minute. The ray 
that is what's the focal ray the focal ray from here to the focal point that's what i want to use right from the pin to the focus well it's on the wrong side but it doesn't stop me i can still use that same ray like the focal ray because i want to do hit the mirror so i just draw this ray here right this is the focal ray for the pinhead it doesn't go to the focus but it's on the same line then I can draw the parallel ray back. How it bounces off. Why is this true? Well, remember, the focus was defined as parallel light goes through it. Well, just because the light starts here, that doesn't mean it acts any different when it hits the mirror. The fact that the light didn't actually go through this point doesn't change the fact that light coming from this direction bounces off in parallel. And again, I didn't change the colors the way I should have. Oh, well, let me do this again. I guess at least it's uniformly uh, hard to see now. So where do those two reflected rays appear to be coming from? They don't meet anywhere. Well, our brain says they're going to meet where the, the light came from. Somewhere back there. Right. So the, the image of the pinhead is right here. And then you could, if you do the rest, the same um, procedure with another part of the pin, actually construct the pin to, to look like this. Right, so the, the image here is upright. And it's virtual. Because the image, the object, the light appears to be coming from a place where the light never actually went. Right here, the light actually passed through this point here before it reached our eye. Here, the light never went behind the back of the spoon. So it's interesting how this happens, that as you move an object closer, say the pin moves closer and closer and closer, there comes this point when it, the image is upside down in front, and then it's, um, it's right way up, but behind it. So you can do this. Get, get a spoon, the shinier the better, and you know, pick, take a small object, like maybe a match or, or a pin if you have one, or maybe your finger will work too, just have to play around with it a bit uh, until you, you see it. And you move it closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, and you see it upside down. But then there comes the point, when you pass the focus, of course you can't see the focus, you don't know where that is. Um, but you pass that point, and suddenly you see the image upright, further back and bigger. Let's just try this. So I didn't right here, the image here is smaller than this one, but it actually depends a little bit on how far back the pin is. Yeah, those, those, you could do some geometry with the triangles here to figure out sizes. You can look it up in a textbook or figure it out yourself. Right? How much bigger is this one than this one? Just work with the triangles and the angle. I think you can figure it out based on the focal length and, and the distance of the pin from the mirror, for example. All right, so this was concave mirrors. Now, the next type of mirror is called a convex mirror, and it's the back of a spoon. Now, the back of a spoon, right, what happens to the light? Well, I, let's do the same thing we did with the concave mirror and pretend we shoot in light. From, from far away, it's just parallel. So here's my light, right? And the light ray that hits the, the, the back of the spoon right here, that will just bounce right back. Why will it do that? because the tangent of the mirror is like this, so it just hits it at 90 degrees, bounces back. Now I kind of gave away the, I guess, the, um, the punchline here by drawing this point, but you'll see what I mean. I did that. So let's draw another line that's parallel, coming in like this. So this line is going to hit the mirror up here, and so to figure out what angle does it, does it go off on, well, we know instant angle is, is refractive angle, so here's my, here's my um, tangent. I could draw the normal too. The normal would be like this. I can find instant angle is um, refraction. I did draw this badly, didn't I, already? The problem. Um, I mean, I just, just eyeballed this. So let me, let me ignore this point. Let me get rid of this point right here. I think it's just confusing everybody, including myself. shouldn't be that, right? So I'm just going to draw it at roughly the, this thing here. Um, if 
bounces off maybe maybe something like like this. The best I'm gonna do it. So instant angle is angle of refraction. Another array comes in down here. Right? And so this light ray here, right, bounces back here, but I can actually extend this line um, backwards. So my brain doesn't know that the light was not coming from further down. So this light ray down here that comes in and again it bounces back, and it's going to bounce back like this. Right? Why? Because the, this is the normal, this, those two angles have to be the same. And then what happens, what you notice is that if you do this and you look at it carefully, you'll find that all the parallel rays appear to be coming from this point back there. So it's sort of like a virtual focus. I can draw another line, maybe let's draw this one here. I'm going to kind of draw it, going to draw it knowing the result, of course. Um, it's going to bounce back like this. I might call this a diverging mirror because the incoming rays, they don't converge in a point, they diverge off in all sorts of directions, right? But from an onlooker up here or down there, they all agree that the light appears to be coming from this point. So this is going to be um, my my focal point right there at this in this in the center right there. So I'll mark this. Of course, the light never actually goes through there, but it appears to be coming from there. So our rules are then, well, parallel becomes focal, focal becomes parallel, just as before. Because a ray that comes in, heading for the focal, is going to bounce back parallel. So let's construct an image for a of our pin for this sort of um, mirror. So we're going to draw two rays. We're going to draw the... Um, the parallel ray and the focal ray, just as we did before. So I'll go to parallel ray first. Parallel ray goes here. It's the incoming one. And then it'll bounce back as a focal ray. The focal focus is here in the back. So it'll bounce back as if it had come from the focus. What's the second ray I can draw? Well, the second rule is focal ray becomes parallel ray. So I'm going to draw the focal ray. I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw it like this. Right, this is the ray that goes to the focal point. It never actually gets there because the focal point is behind the, the spoon, right? But that doesn't matter. Geometrically, it's still in that direction. It's still true that this ray here is going to bounce back um, parallel. All right, so this ray here is going to appear to be coming from somewhere along this line. So my brain says. Okay, now where's the image formed? You could read carefully, you've got three lines there, uh, but I want to know where do the two lines are reflected across. So now my color coding is actually more important. Those green lines, those are the reflected ones. So this point here is where the image of the pin is formed. And again, you can show from the, say, doing the same construction with the bottom, that, um, or like some intermediate point that the whole pin is going to look like this. This is my image. Um, it is it is virtual. So it's behind the, the spoon, behind the, the curved mirror. The light never actually went there. Um, it's upright, and in this case, it's it's smaller. Right? But how much smaller? Well, I could match what happens if the pin is further away or closer. Um, it tends to be smaller, but but this is just the way we've drawn it in this particular situation. Okay, so and and there's no sort of transition like there was in a the concave mirror. So you can look at the back of a spoon, right? See a reflection, a reflection of some object. 
move the object closer, further away, it's always going to be upright and behind it. We'll never have this sort of flip um, occur that we saw in the case of the, the concave mirror when we went from wheel and upside down to virtual upright as the pin passed the, the focal point. Okay, so those are mirrors. Those are really just the basic rules. Everything else is just applications. What I really recommend that you do with those ray tracing is you go through every single example I go through here at least once yourself from scratch without looking at it. I found from my teaching that this topic tends to be, it makes sense when somebody else is doing it, but when you meet your first diagram to draw and you haven't actually done it before, you get lost. This example here, right? It's, it's fairly straightforward, but you got to just do it once, right? So maybe now is a good point to, to stop the video. In fact, I'm going to finish it right here. This is the end of part one. And then there's going to be a part two where I do the same thing for lenses. Right? But before you watch part two, maybe just see if you can reproduce those couple of examples that, um, that I went through. The concave mirror with the object far away, the concave mirror with the object closer than the focal length, and then the convex um, mirror. All right, do that, and then I'll see you in part two.